eight or seven classes left because I have started so late. I mean, actually, I should have probably been going about a month ago. Um, <clears throat> so I am probably going to try to just read some. Um, what I want to do now <clears throat> is I want to follow a specific line. It's probably a little bit different line than you might have thought that <clears throat> we would take. But um, it is the line that the Lord wanted me to start off with. <clears throat> and uh, I've actually alluded to this a couple of times when I've shared recently <clears throat> this difference uh, between the life of our creation and the life of Jesus' creation. And to, to see that in two different ways. One is the life of our creation, meaning the old creation versus the new creation. That's really, in a sense, nothing new, nothing unheard of. But I also want to look at a little different angle here, and that is um, the difference <clears throat> between the life that we have, excuse me, let me chew this up. The life that we have created called civilization versus God's creation in its pure form. To do this, I've got a bunch of pages just on this one subject. So I'm going to try to read because I know that we're not going to get too far if I don't. <clears throat> There's a difference between the life of our creation and the life of Jesus's. The civilized life is a life that men have breathed artificial life into, but it is not life. Folks, that's Pretty much all of us are involved in what we call life that is really um, a structure that controls us. We were talking about this at, at dinner, you know, this very thing. Um, it is into this creation of our own that we have found our importance. And it is true. That's where we find our importance. Not in God's, cre not, not in comprehending God through his creation, because you can't comprehend God through our creation. It, he didn't say the civilized man's creation will declare the glory of God. It doesn't. It declares the stench of man or whatever, but it doesn't declare the glory of God. <clears throat> and uh, I, I fear that, um, I, I, I also alluded to this when uh, I was in Ireland, we read the, the poem that I wrote about the seasons, and Michael Finnegan was commenting on it and how much he appreciated the fact that it was written about creation reality. If you remember, it's, it's all based initially on a crepe myrtle tree outside my window, <clears throat> as opposed to or the busyness of driving or going somewhere or buying something or going, you know, doing all this kind of stuff. And, <clears throat> and then I told him the story about one time I was at a, a bookstore and it had an upper floor and it's a big glass window where you could look out. And there were cars, there was a big freeway. Cars were going there and the parking lot up to the freeway was just full of cars and everything. And I was just watching all of this. And... And, and as I look, uh, you know, you could see big buildings and stuff in the backdrop, and everything was our creation. And, and I thought, <clears throat> what stories does the, the stream coming out of the mountains that has you know, received its water from melting snow that was in the heavens that, was, that had already flowed down and then started the cycle over. And, and what stories does it tell of the, of the rock that is set there and, 
and uh, it has just been there for thousands of years, you know. And uh, we were talking about, I, I mentioned, some guy mentioned that in Washington there are these big redwood trees. They're huge. They've been around for thousands of years, you know. And, uh, you know, they even cut, cut holes in them and you can drive your car through them. They make it into a bridge or a, a little tunnel and stuff like that. <clears throat> and um, some guy said, do you know how old that tree is? You know, none of us knew. And he said, this was a Christian guy. He said, that tree was alive when David danced before the Lord. And I just, you know, look at our junk. And anything that would last, we bomb it. You know, I'm thinking of Europe now, and you know, you know, <clears throat> you know, they talk about all their old stuff, but a lot of it they've had to rebuild themselves. You know, um, but can that stream flow into the river that flows to the sea? Can it speak to us? I, I, I'm not trying to be, you know, Zen-like or anything. I'm trying to say what we spent the last class saying, and that is that these things that God created do declare something to us. That's why I took the time to go through so many scriptures, because it is undeniable, and yet, you know, this creation of our own making has nothing to declare of the Lord. We're not even aware of how to build it to declare the Lord. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, it's just, we build it after ourselves. We build it according to what we like. We build it, you know, and we do all of that. <clears throat> and we're trapped in this world that can't speak to us of the Lord. That's what I'm saying. And, and what I'm also saying is it's having an effect. It's taking its toll on us. Because it's like standing, you know, uh, standing among all these buildings, you know, downtown. I remember the first time I ever went to New York City. Uh, I mean, I went to Washington, D.C. and saw the Capitol. I went to every kind of place. But when I went to New York City, I was awed by the hugeness of these buildings. The old saying is, how can you tell a, a tourist in New York? He's the one with the sunburned throat, you know. You know. Anyway. But you're trapped in them. People were just going and people were walking. And if something happened, if somebody tried robbing somebody or whatever, and I know I saw stuff, nobody would stop and help. Didn't even give it them a thought. There was no thought of anything except my life, my job, my time schedule, all this kind of stuff. And this is the year of rest, so I can talk about this stuff, can I? All right, so that's part of the premise. But again, that's a physical manifestation of a spiritual truth. But I believe that there is, I'm going to say it like a sickness coming into society. And it can only go so far. And I'm not preaching doom and gloom. I'm, I'm preaching the, you can only go so long without uh, spiritual reality saving you, a, a breath of fresh air. I mean, you know, there's a million ways to say it. <clears throat> yes. So it is into this creation of our own making that we have found our importance. And that's, see, I mean, that, look at that. Our importance is based on this created thing. Who we are and what we, you know, uh, you meet somebody and what's one of the first questions they ask you? What do you do? They don't say, who are you or what do you like or what do you like or da 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 da. What do you do? And that defines you. And however it's said gives you importance or lack of it. Our shadow is never lifted from the earth, meaning that we're always busy, always doing, always working. <clears throat> we try to find answers to our creation. No wonder Christians are confused. <laughs> They're seeking answers to this, this man-made thing, and God's not trying to give answers to that. 
But that's what they believe God's interested in, and he could care less about that. He cares, and he cares less about that than he does the true creation of his own hands, not even the creation in Christ, because at least that has a chance to declare something to you. So you ain't going to get nothing from this other than us. <clears throat> our, I, I wrote, our universe is pulling us down, not his, our universe. All our time is given to our chosen existence with little time for truly living. And we cannot truly live while bunched up over circumstances that exist because of the trouble that comes with only existing. Did you hear that? That, you know, the, most of the trouble that we're having is because we're only existing. And we know there's more. It's a thing that I referred to on Sunday and that I've been meditating on for some months now. This sense of awe in relationship to God is gone, and I'll get into that. We've, we've lost the awe because we've lost the present in tuneness, sorry, bad English, the present recognition of the glory of God. And the heavens declare that, but man's creation doesn't declare that. So there's no way to reach that in, that in that light. Now, we've set up a place where you can come to a revelation of Christ and all of that, and that's, that's wonderful. But I'm speaking of a larger, you understand what I'm saying, I'm speaking of, of mankind on this earth and the life that we've carved out of it that isn't the Lord. <clears throat> um, if we stagnate, we decay. But stagnation is not due to the lack of time, but how we utilize what is given. And that's, that's it. See, we always think we don't have enough time. You know, you've heard me say that before. You know, someone, I ask them to do something, they said, man, I'm sorry, I just don't have enough time. And, I'm, and I told them, well, don't you have the same amount of time as so-and-so, 24 hours in a day? And don't, the same as so-and-so, 24 hours in a day? Well, we all have the same amount of time. What do you mean you don't have enough, somebody, you only have like 20 hour days or something like that. Did God, you know, but it's how we utilize it. But, but in our creation, we have created a life that sucks and drains us. And by the way, because of this decision, you're going to hell. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. We're joking here. <laughs> <laughs> outside of that we understand what we're talking about <clears throat> but it is isn't it is isn't don't all of us feel this this the tentacles of this thing trying to suck the life out of us and keep us from the things that are important and doggone it we need to be about the things that are important jesus said i must be about my father's business that's a good creation to be working in because everything about it declares the Lord. When you see the Lord, you also see the Lord. Do you understand what I mean? When you see the Lord spiritually, when you look around, you see the Lord because the reality is being reflected. <clears throat> um, the reason why our jobs, etc., seem like Egyptian taskmasters is that the way of Egypt has become what we are in bondage to. Do you ever seek a promised land or have you just resigned yourself to Egypt? They don't, the Egyptian and the Egyptian way, they don't serve our purposes, we serve theirs. When you're in it, you have to, you have to serve it. In the 60s, we called it serving the man. <clears throat> Let the homeland God has provided, provide for you. What I mean is God told Israel, enter in to rest and that plan. And, and folks, he, he was literally talking about the physical manifestation of the spiritual truth. And it was still good. It still worked. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where I'm getting at is that there is this place in the Lord 
that it works all the way down spirit, soul, and body. You don't have to walk around like you're spiritual, but, you know, this zombie otherwise or something, you know, or spiritual on Sunday or something. Um, and, and God said, it is a land that flows with milk and honey, and there are, there are vineyards there that you didn't plant that will be yours, and homes you didn't build that will be yours. Hmm, wow. You know, God will provide if we'll go after him in this way. But isn't it funny that we're going after him in this way of rest? Enter into my rest, not enter into working hard his way. Now, let's leave civilized world and go work hard here. No, no, enter into the promised land, the land of promise. <clears throat> I wrote, better is a small house with contentment. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about our wisdom. Based on our comprehension of what we have created, because let's face it, we have a good comprehension of what we've created. When I say we, I'm not talking about this church or Bible school, but, but, but industrialized nation or world that we are, we... Um, based on our comprehension of what we have cr created, we may assume that we know much about life. When we don't know much about life at all, we know how to build a creation that's different than God's. Who's the first person that did that? Cain. Cain. <laughs> Went right at it had a mark that marked him as cursed of God, and he went and built a big city and became the head guy of it, and nobody knew he was cursed. Everybody thought he was blessed because he was successful. Abel looked cursed, and he was blessed. <laughs> Type of Christ, a picture of the lamb laying down his life. <clears throat> So I'm going to read this again. Based on our comprehension of what we have created, we may assume that we know much about life based on knowing our duties. And let's face it, we get in a slot and we learn our duties, and we learn it so good. Now, not everybody does. Jim's boss doesn't, but Jim has. You learn those duties, and, and you, you are an expert in that, that field. You know what an expert is, don't you? A former drip under pressure. At least Carolyn got that. Anyway. <clears throat> this gives us an air of confidence because we know our duties. Gives us an air of confidence, even pride. But with so much knowledge of things, why are there still so many doubts and fears? My Lord. And I wrote down, stop looking at other people. You are one of them. You are the enemy. You're the enemy of your own soul, your own happiness, your own, you know. I mean, you know, we, we have an example right here with this couple that just moved here, that got rid of everything, sold everything, came here. Do you have any clue how scary that is? And, and I bet they didn't come here just simply to do what they, just repeat what they did up there. I bet they're hungry for Jesus. And we got more coming. Emmy's coming for that reason. They're, they're not just looking for a classroom for good teaching. They're trying to break out of something that is like a spider web that's holding them in, you know, in this system, in this world. And they want to go for God with all their heart. <clears throat> we spout our wisdom in order to calm the world, and yet we still struggle. And I'll just be honest with you. The, you know, this, I don't, this could sound all sorts of ways, and people are always looking for me to say something wrong so they can, aha, he said this. 
But most of the struggles I deal with are the stuff other people are doing. You know, it's not really even that I'm freaking out. It's the junk other people are going through. And many times I'm having to minister to them. Even people that are going through stuff against me, I'm more calm than they are, you know. That's not a, that's not a uh, you know, declaration of myself. It is my attempt to say the wisdom of the Lord works. Now, I've got a long, long way to go, and I'll just say this real quick. When it comes to astrophysics or quantum physics, I, I'm an idiot. I mean, I know some things, and I'll share those with you, but I don't think I'm anything, and I really don't. There are whole realms of things that I, I have no clue when they talk about it, but, you know, I know how to get to it. Jesus is the answer, you know. He's the, he explains everything, everything. There's, you know, <clears throat> and so if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't share anymore. If what I shared didn't work because of my background and because of the old hippie thing and all that, I'd just go, well, this stuff doesn't work. The heck with this. I'm going to try Buddha for a while or I'm going to try being a Hindu or something, you know. I mean, the Hindu's bound to have the answer. They got... What is it, 300 million gods? Got to be in there somewhere. I'm sure I'll bump into him sooner or later. <clears throat> we spout our wisdom to calm the world, and yet we still struggle. Truth spoken is not enough. Truth must be lived. This life is not a pursuit of intellectual improvement. And, and our kind of teaching and place can be seen as that. And if all we do is improve our intellect, yeah, I mean, I, I, there was some words I almost said. We, we shouldn't exist. We shouldn't exist. And, and I'll tell you how serious I am about that kind of stuff. I have prayed regularly. If, the, if we ain't doing it right, if we're really off, destroy us, Lord. You know, I don't worry about, you know, there's people praying that out there. I'm, you know, I ain't worried about them. I bet I, I say that. I say that. In the whole thing now, if it's not real, if it's not Christ, if it's not glorifying your son, if it's not being a manifestation of your son, if it doesn't come from the very life of your son, then end the whole thing. And you know what? I, I, in two ways, I have absolutely no fear of that. Number one is I was here when it began, and I know God began the thing. But I also know God can end something. He can start something and end something, and that's, that's good. But I also know that not the devil or not all of the hatred in the world from other people can stop what God wants to keep going. And not only that, but I know that when I say that, God takes me seriously. And if this place ever does become that, you know, and there, like I said, there are people who say bad things. It doesn't matter what they say. What matters is what God says. And if God says, I still got my hand on you, then I say, I'm with you, Lord. I'm with you. That's all there is to it. It wasn't real complicated, you know. Just, I'm with you wherever you go. <clears throat> My next subtitle is called Physics and Inventions, or Our Creation. Physics and Inventions. Nature is filled with so many secrets that men are discovering. Electricity, Spectrums of light, elephants hear deeper than we, owls see heat signatures in the dark, hawks see for miles, microwaves, on and 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 on. <clears throat> uh, we'll get into that, but one of the realities is 
that man walked around for most of his existence on this earth thinking the way I see is the only way to see. And yet, there are creatures that see upon a light spectrum that we have no clue about. You know, the night vision goggles, have you ever heard of such a thing? Which wasn't around all that long, is one of those spectrums. And there's so many. Well, I thought the way we saw was the way that that's how you see. Yeah. Our, our, our frame of reference is very narrow in the spectrum. Very narrow in the spectrum. And that we're just talking about the light spectrum. Now, there are so many other, you know, again, uh, microwaves and, and uh, uh, telephone, you know, all the, the different kind of waves and stuff like that. We thought the way we hear is the way to hear, and yet now you can literally talk to somebody around the world on a telephone or you know and what I'm saying by that is our inventions have not invented anything they've if you will they've invented a way to utilize what always was there but invisible to us <clears throat> all right so the the Bible says all things were created by and for and so so what is this telling us? This is telling us, if we just listen, it's saying you don't see everything. You don't hear everything. You, in your present form, need way more of the Lord to open you. Can I get amen? Amen. Yeah. I just want to say, even us seeing in infrared and seeing in all these other, you know, visible spectra, I mean, invisible spectra, <clears throat> us harnessing that, is there and invisible and undiscoverable to us and kind of fitting it so we can use it in our little spectrum of use. So it's not even the purity of what is unseen. It's like a, a faulty, yeah, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a retrofitting for something that's not quite up to snuff. You know? that's, and that's the heart of where I'm going with all this. So well said. <clears throat> But instead of discovering God, and instead of this awakening us to the fact of deeper levels beyond our present capacity, we think the goal is to harness the natural. Isn't that what you just said? <clears throat> this is seen as the height of enlightenment and advancement. Just harnessing it in our little creation we make it bow to us instead of bound to what it represents. Inventions, like the cell phone. How did we do without them, I wrote. But it's not the cell phone we need, but the people. The people with whom we're trying to make contact, to touch, to enjoy. But now it's, I have this kind of phone, what kind do you have? I have that, I did that. You see what I mean? It's, not, it's really more about the phone <laughs> than it is about the people. Well, did you call anybody today? No, no, I, you know. Yeah, I played on the phone all day. Didn't even have to be in contact with anybody. I'm loving it. <clears throat> We're given glorious devices, such as cell phones, computers, GPS, and told that these are the height of achievement, that we are privileged to have them, but we are still dry and lost. Release, rest, and true wisdom do not come by becoming lords of the Egyptian way. Things given to ease our lives only bring new complications. Things cannot bring about release from things. <laughs> Great strides in terms of material gains or technological fields cause us to bow at the altar of genius. We have captured the shadow and caused it to work for us. <laughs> you understand what I mean when I say that? We're still missing the Lord, but we've captured the shadow. We've captured the physical manifestation of the spiritual thing. 
But instead of finding the Lord and bowing to him, we're making this stuff bow to us and work for us. We have become the Egyptian taskmasters in, in spirit. <clears throat> we have made what represents God beyond the senses serve the heathen and think we are nobler for it. The big has captured our imagination, but not the great. What is truly great, you, you understand. We call them our inventions, but they are only our discovery of what had been all along. Like discovering a dot in the circumference of a circle, they were there to suggest that there is a higher order than bread, a deeper depth to be explored, but we have ignored their message and gloried in our higher achievements. And because of that, we sink into our wretched existence. All that is sweet and true is surrendered for what is profitable and for the badges of success we display, cars and houses. And, you know. <clears throat> the once awed or hopeful have become jaded. They join the party platform of Egyptian life. At best, they remember the thought of walking in pleasant paths, but the feel of it is long gone. They do not feel it in their hearts anymore. It is a distant land and a fool's pursuit. Uh, there's this category of stuff I've been searching on where I, <clears throat> so I'm going to make this statement. I don't know that it'll be clear to you. Royalty was driven out by need and greed. Once you put out the light of truth, then the light goes out in you. They think they are kings, but they are hostages. <laughs> I've got one little section here, and I think I'll just stop with that, because the next one is uh, after that is the one about we've lost the awe and wonder, and it goes on for pretty, pretty far because I want to explain that awe thing. There is, a, there is a reality of the Lord that just bursts forth, and it just, makes, it just makes everything new. It just, things blow your mind. <laughs> and it's just exciting. And so much of Christianity has lost the awe. But anyway, before we get there, true wisdom and insight. To seek light is not the same as to seek answers to the frailties of the creation we have made. We're seeking light, but it's not, we're not. We're seeking um, answers to the frailty of the creation we have made because it's a broken system. And so, so we're seeking God for the thing that, you know, I remember a picture the Lord gave me years ago was, was we've got this old jalopy and it's, it's breaking down all the time and, and the fuel pump's going out and the lights are not working, the brake lights are not working and this and that. One thing after another, and we're putting along, we're going, we're going along, you know, and, and we're saying, you know, all of a sudden the, the, Brakes go out on it. We say, oh, Lord, heal my car. Fix, you know, f fix the brakes on this thing, you know. So he fixes the brakes. <laughs> and then the alternator goes out. Wait a minute. This kind of sounds like y'all's cars. <laughs> and, then, and then it's, go, oh, Lord, fix the alternator on this, you know. And, and, it's, and it's just, we just keep, we've got this system that is just a, a broken down system that God never intended to heal or fix. Does that make sense? But we, we stay in it because we built it. Why, you know, I owe it to this car. I mean, I've, I've, put, I've replaced every part on this car once, you know, once already. And, you know, it's been a faithful car. Sounds real faithful. <clears throat> You know, that's sarcasm. It's, it's a piece of junk. And so, you know, that's, you know, we're, uh, 
we're trying to get God to give us light on how to uh, make our way through something that he didn't create. That's the only way I know how to put it. I'm trying my best here. We seek for wisdom, but we ignore the face of God. Nature declares him, but we will not see it there until we see it in him. And that's the truth. It does declare, but it, you, we're not going to see it there until you see him. But if your soul is bound up in a system, you're not going to see him. Where are the men today like the men of old who spoke such wisdom and had such insight? This light of life is not like an academic awakening to truth unknown, but comes to a longing heart, hungry for one strain of heavenly music. A deep longing to listen to the invisible choir. You understand what I'm saying. I think I'm becoming more poetic in my old age. <laughs> um... Hear that choir. No man has heard, you know. No, or, or if they have, they would do their best to explain it. It would not sound like that. You understand? Only the Holy Spirit can breathe that into you. And only a heart that's really longing after the Lord will find that. Uh, that's why I wrote a deep longing to listen to the invisible choir. And I'm actually alluding to this because if eventually, Lord willing, if I ever get there, there's this thing called string theory. And it's not how you tune your guitar. It is the very smallest particle they believe, the very building block of all things. It is, so, it is the smallest subatomic particle from which everything else is built. Um, and interestingly enough, they vibrate, and they're like strings and music and what have you. We'll, we'll hopefully talk about that. Lost the wonder and all. Can you all remind me that that's where we're going to take up next time? Lost the wonder and all. Father, help us to... Um, not just go through another class or God help us to break out of the things that we don't even know are holding us that have us in bondage that have quenched out the awe and left us with vague memories of something that used to be there now we're just trodden along Father, help us by the Spirit of God to find Jesus in a new way, in an awesome way, in a way that will be greater than any class we've ever had. It will fill us with wonder and awe, and our cup will run over. Father, do it, do it, do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Alrighty, we're dismissed.